our service on Sunday, this Sunday, 15th of August. I'd like to begin it with a prayer. Each day is a present, Lord, perfect and new, given by heaven for me and for you, given to mould and to shape and as how we will, with words and behaviour, for good or for ill. So let us each morning resolve in our plan to use every moment as best as we can and fill every hour in just such a way to show the Lord thanks for the gift of his day. Amen. When I thought about today's reading and about the reference again to bread and to eating flesh and blood. I thought perhaps this may be symbols. And I thought maybe um, we use a lot of symbols using food throughout the year. If I say pancakes, you know I'm talking about Shrove Tuesday. Or cross buns, <coughs> and we're thinking more about Easter. Treacle toffee, and there's a thought there then of bonfire night, and my favourite time of the year, turkey. And then we've got our Christmas time and Christmas presents. And perhaps this is what Jesus meant in much the same way, to remember by these symbols what he was trying to say. So I'm going to pass over to Thomas, who's going to do our reading for us this morning. Okay, Thomas? Yeah. <clears throat> John chapter 6, verses 51 to 58. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the rest of the world. Wait. Which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, you, <clears throat> unless you eat the flesh of, of the wait, Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise them up at the last day, for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I, and I in them. Just just as the living father sent me and i live because of the father so the one who feeds on me will live because of me this is the bread that came down from heaven your ancestors ate the manna and died but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever that this is the word of the lord thanks be to god let us pray father we give you thanks for all that you have done for us for life and the love that you bestow upon us lord make us mindful of your gifts that we may be content and grateful giving our love and lives to you all our days through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you, one God for ever. Amen. Lord, we come to you asking for you to fill us and feed us today. There are so many ways in which we are empty and need your nourishment. Jesus, bread of life, feed us and nourish us with yourself. We pray for those who are hungry, those experiencing physical hunger, in parts of the world where there is not enough food, for those on the brink of starvation. Particularly, we pray for places which come up in the news 
and then get forgotten, such as the Yemen. We pray for those who have enough to feed their families until the rains fail and the crops die. Especially, we pray for our link parishes in Namibia. And we pray that they get the right weather so that their crops can grow and they can feed their families. We pray for all organisations seeking to give people the bread they need. We pray for people in refugee camps or homeless on our own streets. We thank you for those who feed them, maybe in soup kitchens or in hostels. We bring to mind our local food banks, especially urban outreach, and ask you to give courage to those who need them, but feel ashamed to ask for help. Jesus, bread of life, Feed us and nourish us with yourself. Lord Jesus, we know that your heart of compassion aches for the pain of the world. So we pray for all those who need the bread of comfort in their lives. We think of those we have heard about on the news who have faced trouble and pain this week. Particularly the people of Greece and Italy as the wildfires spread and for the people of Af Afghanistan. We pray for those in our own community who are suffering from physical or mental illness. We remember all those close to our hearts. We ask for your comfort for those who have other difficulties, victims of abuse, those who live in unhappy homes, those who are confused and don't know where to turn. We ask you to wrap your loving arms around all those who mourn. And in the stillness, we bring our own troubles, worries and sorrows to you, knowing that you care about everything that bothers us, however trivial it might seem. Jesus, bread of life, feed us and nourish us with yourself. We bring to mind those who are spiritually hungry, those who are searching for something more beyond themselves, who have not yet found you. Give us the wisdom and the sensitivity to guide people to you. We pray for the young people of our land, so many of whom have never had the opportunity to meet with Jesus or anyone who loves him. We pray for all those who have received exam results this week and we pray for your guidance as they seek where to go next with either their education or into the workplace. Give courage to Christians in schools, colleges, universities and workplaces that they may be a shining witness to their friends and colleagues. And we pray for those Christians who are persecuted for their faith, yet still remain constant, trusting that you will supply their needs. Jesus, bread of life, feed us and nourish us with yourself. Lord, we thank you for this church community and we thank you for the opportunities here online that we are fed by your word. And we pray for our leaders by name, just in the quietness. We remember any of our community who are not currently able to be in church in person, but asking that they will still feel that they belong. Jesus, bread of life, feed us and nourish us with yourself. Finally, Lord, in the stillness we bring our own personal needs to you. Help us to rejoice that you care about every detail of our lives, even the ones we think you don't notice. We ask that you will give us food for our journeys this week 
and we name in the silence places or situations that might be hard for us. Nourish us with your presence in every situation we find ourselves, particularly those unexpected moments where we need extra help. Help us to go out from here knowing that we have met with you and have been fed by you this morning. Jesus, bread of life, feed us and nourish us with yourself. And we bring our prayers to a close by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Over well, the past few weeks we've been looking at passages to do with bread. From the feeding of the 5,000 to Jesus telling us that he is the bread of life. Today's passage moved us onto the description that Jesus has given himself as being the living bread and how those who eat this bread will live forever. Imagine for a moment you've never ever heard anything about Jesus and your knowledge of what goes on in a church service is equally limited. You find yourself in a building very much like any of the churches in our team and there at the front of church you see a priest telling people to take and eat this bread for this is my body. To say that someone could be left a little bit confused is probably an understatement. Of course, in our tradition, we don't think that we are physically eating the body of Jesus. We recognise it as a symbol of Jesus giving his life for us so that we can have eternal life. It's only natural that we hear the words that we use so often in our communion services in this passage. But we've got something that the disciples didn't have because we, not, we know what comes next in the story. So it's natural for us to hear echoes of Jesus speaking to the disciples at the Last Supper, a pattern for which we set our services of Holy Communion on. But this passage, it enriches our understanding of why we celebrate communion. And Jesus takes the disciples back to the days of Moses and how manna was sent for them when they wandered across the desert for 40 long years. Jesus gave them a reminder that that bread was for one day only. They could only gather what was needed for that day. And Jesus is telling them here that he will nourish for eternal life. It isn't time limited. Those months when we were unable to share in communion were so difficult for so many, myself included. And as we began to celebrate communion in church once more, I know just how emotional I found it and I know I wasn't the only one that felt that way as well. There was this realisation of how much I'd missed that connection as we shared. I'd felt a real physical pain at not being able to do that with others. Sharing communion is so much more than just being a symbol because we recognise that everything Jesus did for us in that moment but it nourishes us and it enables our faith to be deepened. In sharing communion, we deepen our relationship with Jesus, not mechanically, but as we become more and more like him over the years, or at least we should be. But it isn't something that we should ever take for granted, because this is how we meet God in a mysterious and dramatic way, as God gives himself to us, and we, in return, try to shape our lives as a loving gift for God. We hold out our hands and we long to receive from Jesus. It is not from whoever is presiding at the service. Bread nourishes us. 
And so when Jesus uses that term to describe himself, he means that he is a living bread. He wants to reveal more deeply and how profoundly he can nourish each one of us. He offers us a relationship where we can experience a life-giving relationship, one that we need more than ever today as we live in a world of ever-changing priorities and choices. Have you ever thought about the skills that go into marketing products in the shops or via the media? Supermarket bakeries that are situated at the back of the store still seem to be able to let an aroma of freshly baked bread or cakes reach the door as you walk through it. The scent of a barbecue reaches across housing estates, freshly ground coffee, a bacon butter. And there are some smells that just seem to make us hungry and they aren't always the things which are necessarily the most nourishing, but they still, they still tempt us. Because our relationship with food is personal. It's based on our own preferences, our own choices. But here Jesus says, I am the living bread. So what's our relationship with him? Have we made that personal? Have we made the choice to follow him each day of our lives as well? How often do we actually feed on his word and drink in his life? Jesus invites us to share with him something that is so much more sustaining than a quick snack to quench that little bit of hunger. Our appetite for Jesus needs to be nourished. Over the holidays, I've heard so many people saying how much they needed a break this year. Describing it in phrases like, I need to recharge my batteries, I need a rest. Coming to sharing Jesus, the living bread, is about us recharging our batteries, plugging ourselves back into being intimate with God. Because we need to stop and pause and rest a while, but we also need to rest in God's love, let him recharge our batteries. And we need to seek his refreshment. I never seem to be amazed how I can go to bed completely and utterly exhausted and wake up ready to go again the following morning. Or even a quick 40 winks on the settee can somehow do the same. How is it that those few minutes or hours of rest can really equip us for the next challenge? Imagine what resting and recharging your spiritual batteries could do, where we just come and be with God. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants to be so close to us, part of our very being, supporting and empowering us. We can appreciate the gift of a blood transfusion for medical purposes. And by his death and his resurrection, Jesus makes the offer of life flowing within us eternal life, his life. We live in a world where recharging and replacing batteries is a part of daily life. Mobile phones, game consoles, Kindles, electric cars. But we also live in a world we have, where we have more gadgets that need plugging in than don't. You only need to look around your kitchen to see that. We need to also understand that in our modern world, devices also need to be plugged in but we are also in need of being plugged in. If we don't plug ourselves into God, replace our batteries, charge them up, then it will lose its sense of purpose, just as a device would lose its sense. When we share communion, we receive the gift of life from Jesus. It's the gift of God who became one for us. It's a gift of love with sacrifice. In sharing communion, we remember all that Jesus did for us. And in knowing Jesus, we can recognise that God is at hand. Pope Benedict wrote, We have to rediscover God. Not just any God, but the God that has a human face. Because when we see Jesus Christ, we see God. As we said, we can all appreciate some foods are more appetising and appealing than others. And we each have our own preferences. And there are times when we enjoy trying something new. And the same should be at the truth of our appetite for the word. The appetite to get to know Jesus better. Both in the ways that we worship together and also in our times of private devotion. In Jesus' time, the faith of the Jews relied heavily on tradition maybe became 
dull and lifeless and tasteless maybe. Jesus offered them something new, something to share with everyone. Maybe the next time you come to share communion with others, you will realise that Jesus can nourish you, to revitalise you and to make a conscious decision to set that right balance on your spiritual diet. But we don't have to wait for that moment. We can do that whenever. So well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will nourish each one of us, that you will revitalise us. Help us to make a real conscious decision to set right that balance in our spiritual diet. And Lord, we pray for those that don't know you as their Lord and Saviour. And we consider just how much better the meal that we share at communion will be when everyone comes to know that you are their Lord. Lord, we thank you that you invited us to join in your feast. So go with us this week in everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we think and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Thank you.